Okay, my naga, I want you to listen to this rabbi real close, and then I want to feature some great drive by the by the bro uh, John Levy, uh, the bro Cudi Mayo. You know, we're going to talk about some Utah Judah, but let's see what they're saying about Utah and the old world Israelites in America. From these areas, we find the tribes of Joseph, Ephraim, and Manasseh have been predominant in Britain and after that in the USA. Ephraim, the tribe of Ephraim was especially important in Britain and its offshoots, whereas uh, Manasseh came to dominate in the USA. Nevertheless, nevertheless, both tribes... I'm sorry, man, his voice is crazy. You know, I mean, the more we become aware, we like, yo, like, yeah, like you, <laughs> these people, something else, man. You know what I mean? They, they it's weird voices and the whole type of flow to them, man. <laughs> now, let's listen real close and do our best to decipher what he's saying about Utah, and then let's get some drop, man. We got some good drop to surf the wave. A optimal way surface drop nation. Let go. Tribes are to be found within each other, as we will see, and influenced each other. In addition to that, we find that within the USA are to be found representatives of all of the tribes. In some way, all of the tribes of Israel are to be found within the USA. The USA today is a major Israelite nation. And in addition to being dominated by the tribes of Joseph, that is Ephraim and Manasseh, especially in Manasseh, it also has uh, other tribes within it. Utah, we identify with Judah. The name Utah, the state of Utah, Utah, is said, this name is said to derive from the name of uh, an American Indian tribe, an American Indian tribe, the Ute. Uh, meaning people of the mountains, or meaning someone who's high up, those that are higher up. Uh, this name Utah, however, is similar to a North European pronunciation in Germany amongst the Ang Anglo-Saxons amongst the Scandinavians of how they would pronounce the name Judah, meaning Jews, Judah. Uh, also the Jutes, we had a, a people in Denmark known as the Jutes who invaded England, who migrated to England, and the Jutes also had the name pronounced as Utah, Yud. Uh so in their twisted minds, they're just talking about all white people. Oh, it, Denmark and Britain, but we know that the real British were melanated, Denmark, Sweden. We got the observations of mankind, right? <laughs> so you can't talk about the creators people without talking original people, and that's just period. You got an original frequency before they were called the tribes of Israel. This was an original seed that was already here. From the days of Shem and Shem's children, they weren't called the tribes of Israel, but they were all Baruch. Right? They all had that Baruch, the blessings, Abraham and all that, right? So before they, you know, want to start with us being a tribe out of Egypt, this this magical seed already existed. We don't need a name, right? But we are realizing that the place <laughs> is right here, that you always been here, my naga. You became a stranger on your own land. And they're, you know, seeping out the info. Seeping out the info. I'm on HebrewNations.com. Let's get a little bit more of this Jewish rabbi talking about you, though. <laughs> and remember, all these European nations are melanated people. And, um... Uh... This name was pronounced very similar to the name Judah, and often the two names are conflated, uh, interchanged with each other. So Utah can be considered from that point of view to be another pronunciation of the name Judah. Also, in addition, there's a similarly named uh, entity. In so now they got to tell you, right? Because we've been telling you, right, Cootie Mayo? We've been dropping this drop, man. Right, my bro, you be? What it do, man? Let's go. In biblical times in this what is now southeast southeast Turkey and northern Cilician area known to classical history as Cilicia or Kilikia and within this area there was a small entity uh, known as Yadi or Yati mm. and this entity was actually uh, a conclave of Jews from Judah from the south 
And it's mentioned as referred to in the Bible in 2 Kings 14.28. It says, Now the rest of the acts of Jeroboam, and all that he did, his might, how he made war, how he recaptured for Israel from Damascus and to Amos. What had belonged to Judah? How are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of, of Israel? And what he is saying is that this person, this king, Jeroboam from the northern tribes, and there were two kings named Jeroboam. The first Jeroboam, Jeroboam, the son of Nabat, he led the tribes, the ten tribes, after they separated from Judah. He rebelled against Rahavam, the son of Solomon, and set up his own kingdom. He took the ten tribes and made them one king, made them an independent entity, an independent polity in the north. He was the first king, and he was in a, he is, uh, listed as Jeroboam one, Jeroboam the first. Jeroboam the second came much later. He was uh, the son of Joash, and he also ruled over the ten tribes, and he enlarged the borders of Israel, he conquered many territories, and amongst other things, he reconquered, he liberated areas that previously had belonged to Israel, that Israelites were still dwelling in, but that others, other foreign entities had conquered. And one of the areas he redeemed was Hamath that belonged to Judah, Hamath that belonged to Judah, Hamath was the name of a city in northern Syria, but it also was applied to the area, the whole area north of, north of that region, Including, including Yadi. Yadi, Yadi was within that region. So too was another, uh, another small, uh, but somewhat at times powerful, polity that neighboured Yadi, known as small, and small the people of small were known as the Dananu, and they're from the tribe of Dan. So here we had two separate conclaves, enclaves from Judah and from Dan, uh, abiding one beside the, each other. At times they were ruled by the same king. And the both of these enclaves were taken into exile by the Assyrians. And so in this way, our people from Judah going into exile alongside the ten tribes were taken into exile by the Assyrians. In addition, after the ten tribes were conquered, they were conquered and taken into exile on three different stages. The king of Assyria, Sennacherib, invaded Judah and attempted to conquer it. And he took all of the unfenced cities, all of the cities without walls around them. He took them and he took all the people. That's what the Bible says, the Midrashim tell us, and also archaeological excavations and inscriptions, Assyrian inscriptions. Damn, he took all the cities, man. What, what happened to all the Nagavir? What happened to all the Naga cities? You need to see this as your story. He keeps flashing Middle East photos. He just talked about Utah as Judah. <laughs> that narrative of the Mormons renaming all these places, it just helps them hide. What's really here, doesn't it? If they say, no, 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 we just renamed it. Who does that help? The person that knows the drop or the person that don't know nothing, right? The person that knows the drop can now hide and say, yeah, it's not the real thing. The real Moab is over there. Moshe's not over here, boss. Ain't nothing to see here, boss. I seen it all, boss. <laughs> so if you're going to investigate, you got to investigate the non-obvious. <laughs> that they came and they knew exactly where they were conquering, exactly where they were invading. And they did their best to, you know, match up, you know, the actual place names that they were looking for. In real time. I'm going to get a part of this part two. You know, I'm going to leave this link so you can dig on it. Let's get it right here. Ethnic origin first accepted their religion. They were close to becoming uh, similar to the Jews. They could conceivably, they could conceivably under different circumstances have gone all the way. What applies to you is pertinent to all of Ephraim in general. The potential is there. He's talking about the Mormons. Let's get it from the top. Um, you know that their religion is similar to Judaism because they both kind of rock with the Old Testament for the most part, right? You got all the, even the polygamy connects to Old Testament times, obviously. So, you know, we see the similarities and, you know, it's just these two factions talking about which is closer to the truth. But let's see what we hearing about you, though. The experience of Utah proves it. Uh, Mormon, Mormon theology, the beliefs of uh, the Mormonism, they are... Uh, are close, they are close in many ways to the Old Testament. They incorporate Old Testament ideas 
they par they, some of the uh, beliefs parallel those of Judaism and Jewish culture. And in the beginning, Joseph Smith, who founded the Mormonism, he said that the Lost End tribes were the Amerindians, American Indians were Lost End tribes. Later, he said that the Norms themselves were the Lost End tribes, were the Israelites. <laughs> well, we're talking more, man, and we're going to get back on our series or really pop off our series officially called Mormons Digging Deeper, man. Where we really dig on the Book of Mormon, go, go back in the Moroni flow, the Mormon. More man, <laughs> it's crazy. Even when you look at these uh, suffixes it's like ish, yeah, ish can mean in English something like pertaining to, but in Arabic, an ish is a man. Just think about it. I mean, these people <laughs> fork tongues, man. So, more ish, ish is man, more man. Ooh, Ooh. <laughs> say it with me, man. Body bag. For the illusion. More ish is more man. Because ish is man in the Arabic flow. So, oh boy. So is Jewish Jew man? Judah man? The Judah man? <laughs> man, y'all ain't no Judah man. <laughs> That's cray cray right now. All right, let's get a, a minute or so that I want to get right into it, man. Uh, great drive from John Leve, Levi, uh, featuring some of Cootie Mayo's great recon throughout the years. Let's go. And that they could learn, each one could learn of which tribe he belongs to by going to an elder, which they have done, which they do. Come on, man. On the whole, the So they just go up to some elder and say, which tribe am I? He'd be like, Ephraim, uh, you're Manasseh. I could tell by your cheekbones. Elders have tell them, according to anecdotes, anecdotal evidence, the elders tell them, most of them, that they belong to the tribe of Ephraim. Yeah. Sometimes they say Manasseh, <laughs> and uh, on occasion they say other tribes, when, especially when the person concerned is of different ethnic origin to the mainstream of people in Utah, as they used to be. The beliefs in the USA termed American exceptionalism. American exceptionalism. American exceptionalism is a, is an accepted uh, way of thought. It is accepted in political science, in philosophy, in national uh, cogitation, in, in, in debates between uh, eggheads, leading uh, intellectuals in America. American exceptionalism is a legitimate trend of thought. It exists, it is thought about, it is discussed. Even people uh, from, uh, from the left wing, from the right wing, uh, President Obama on the one hand. And all right, man, all right, he's going uh, quickly, you know, because he's talking about all these uh, British and stuff, man. Observations. Yeah, look at that popping up. I want to pop it up for it, Naga. It's because we're doing a recon, man. <laughs> Observations of Mankind, man. Welcome back to Benjamin Franklin's own Observations of Mankind concerning the increase of mankind. You know, there's a, I don't know, this is the whole thing, you know, there's different uh, variations of it. <laughs> this looks pretty, you know, pretty thorough. We have read the whole thing before. Go get, go get the Drisnops. Here's, you know, if you want the baby out the bathwater right now, here you go. To body bag everything the rabbi was trying to curve you know israel being british and this and all these other places <coughs> so like i think he meant he mentioned sweden we even gonna talk germany since we've been talking germany and the whole hitler flow the Ashkenazi nazi nazi flow right so let's get it from here it says which leads me to add one remark so here's how he's going to conclude this and this is the weirdest, most strangest conclusion I've ever read in any document, on any letter, on earth, man. On earth, man. <laughs> You're going to see why. Let me get it bigger because it's crazy. Which leads me to add one remark. Matter of fact, let's back it up right here. And since detachments of English from Britain sent to America will have their places at home so soon supplied and increased so largely here. Why should the Palatine Boers or more 
animals <laughs> be suffered to swarm into our settlements. So you don't want no more swarthy people in America being sent over here. He has enough of you already here. <laughs> He's saying America is already swarthy. We don't need no more swarthy people from Africa. We don't need no more swarthy people. <laughs> Which lets you know that they didn't just bring a bunch of dark-skinned people to America. They found swarthy, dark-skinned people already here, as well as Europe, everywhere. That's what the world was looking like, man. It's what the world looks like. You just see it through somebody else's lens and vantage point. We're seeing it through somebody else's vision. Through some seer's eye. Some necromancy spell. East. Now we're the we're so small we could only be from one place. Africa, right? Let's read this. And by herding together, establish their language and manners to exclusion of ours. Those that's Israelite customs. <laughs> Why should the Palatine Boers be suffered to swarm into our settlements and by herding together establish their language and manners to the exclusion of ours? Even you know what I'm saying, you know, uh, other tribes even outside of Israel would have exclusive tribe exclusive customs, exclusive language, you know what I'm saying? We wouldn't be trying to get down and up with the hijack. We'll be separate. He says, why should Pennsylvania, founded by the English, become a colony of aliens? They like to use the word founded like, you know, between founded and discovered. They like to use founded and discovered a lot. <laughs> Way out of context, because you didn't found anything. You just found here. You just found us. That means you founded us, <laughs> you discovered us, <laughs> we are already here. <laughs> it's like you're having a spider on your ceiling. You're like, I've discovered a spider. And the spider looking at you like, man, I've been looking at your head bone for two weeks, man. <laughs> I've been here, man. You didn't discover nothing, man. <laughs> so why should Pennsylvania, founded by the English, become a colony of aliens? Hijacks who will shortly be so numerous as to Germanize us instead of anglifying them. Now, why would he use the word Germanize? What word do you see there? German, yeah. Because the German were black people and they don't want to be Germinated, Germanized <laughs> by these niggas. Don't spread your germs. Your niggerness, who will shortly be so numerous as to Germanize us instead of our anglifying them with what? Jesus. And we still yelling about their Christ today. That's their example of anglifying you, man. And will never adopt our language or customs any more than they can acquire our complexion. So now we're specifically talking about complexion. I like the context so we can't get it messed up. We talking complexion. <coughs> Let's go. <laughs> For the dispel. Which leads me to add one remark. That the number of purely white people. We're just talking complexion. Non-melanated. You know, there's different words for it. The, dump, the, <laughs> the number of non or purely white people <laughs> in the world is proportionately very small. But now you think that they are the people of all of Latin America, and all of Europe, and all of these, even Australia. They think they, they're, they think they the aboriginals. They think when you think American, you think about red, white, and blue, <laughs> blind hair, blue eyes. We've been, oh, we, we think about Canada, we just think about white people. <laughs> the number of purely white people in the world is proportionately very small. All Africa is black or tawny, copper color, all Africa. Asia, chiefly tawny, 
That's copper color. Where's Asia? Huh? 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 Why not? Body bag for the illusion. Asia connects directly with South America. Oh, we're talking North America. Asia. Come on, man. It's a body bag. This is 1751. This is written in 1751. So if all of Africa are niggas, let's just make it clear. Asia are mostly niggas, chiefly tawny. America, holy niggas. Except the newcomers. <laughs> Body back. Ping back. We don't need to prove nothing to y'all. Y'all already said it, man. Can't be from Africa. You just found a bunch of black or tawny people here, right? A uh, copper color race is found here by the European. That's why the definition of an American is you, my nigga. Tawny. Holy Tawny. Remember, we went there before. <laughs> You're going to say a yellowish, dark color, <laughs> tanned. Oh, sunburnt, not sun kissed. Like a Moor, like a Spaniard. What? <laughs> I can't make this shit up. They said like a Spaniard, man. Holy Roman Emperor Charles V. They're, they're doing this. We're talking about kings of Spain. Of Spain, Spain, Spain. King of Spain. Hijacking the Inca, right? King of Spain. <sighs> yeah, we're talking Tony. Like a Spaniard. Like a Moor. Like a Tony Moor. We're getting back to talking about the Moor man or the Moorish. Well, the copper color race is found here, not brought here. Found here, my nut. How do you know? Benjamin Franklin just said, we found. <laughs> All of Africa is black or tawny. Asia's mostly black or tawny or tawny. You know, America's wholly so black or tawny or copper color race is found here by the European boss. How many witnesses do you need to know what an American is? A con? These Europeans, right? First subsequent European Emperor Charles looks like you. This is a European. They're also black or tawny, want to see? America's tawny. And in Europe, the Spaniards. <laughs> Italians, French, Russians, Swedes, didn't know uh, the rabbi talked about the Sweden tribes of Israel are generally what we call a swarthy complexion. Oh, that's even darker than Tawny. Because Tawny is like a Moor or a Spaniard. And oh boy, I mean, swarthy is just a dusky complexion or tawny. So tawny is swarthy or black like the Moors, like the Spaniards, like the Italians. <laughs> they say they're more swarthy than the French, Germans, and English. God, yeah, man, Benjamin Flake is saying the French and the Germans are swarthy. Let's go. As are the Germans, as are the French. 
Russians and the Swedes, except the English, <laughs> the Saxons only, and the English make up the principal body of white people on the face of the earth, boss. That's it. That's it in 1751. That's it in 1751. So you can't talk about Sweden. You can't talk about Spain. In Europe, in general, in Italy, France, or Russia. Putin ain't the OGs. If in the 18th century, Russians were generally swarthy or niggas, and so were the Swedes were niggas, and the French and the Germans, and what happened to all these niggas? That's the question we need to know. I mean, we investigate, man. What happened to all these niggas, man? Same thing to us? Guess so. What happened to all these Negroes, man? We know a lot of them were sent over here, and they said they from Africa, but they just came from France, or they just came from Russia, or they just came from Spain. They were kicking them out. This is what he's saying. Don't send no more of these people over here, man. <laughs> Come on. You're going to make us a colony of aliens. They're going to be so numerous as to Germanize us because the Germans, Anaga, are swarthy complexion. Yeah. French and Germans, man. <laughs> More Spaniards and Italians are all black, right? I never looked up German before. But I don't know. It could be some, could be nothing. <coughs> uh, native of Germany, okay, that's all they're going to give us. Yeah, they ain't going to give us nothing, man, but all right. Maybe the etymology. Yeah, let's try the etymology. You know, you got to keep the water flowing. German. Yeah. Hey, Templar, take the wheel. <laughs> Pertaining to Germany and Germans from Germany. Okay. Let's see. Yeah. I want to know what Germany is. All right. Germany. Okay. Group of tribes. Uh huh. <laughs> of unknown origin. <laughs> Body. So we know they black, right? So these black people, <laughs> you know, uh, of unknown origin, which could be Israelites, considered to be <laughs> neither Latin nor Germanic. So their Germanic is like Ger German-ish, right? You're not Germanic. You're the original Germans of unknown origin, like a dragon. We're talking tribes. Perhaps originally the name of an individual tribe, but, but Gaulish Celtic origins have been proposed, but they don't even know where the original Germans came from. Perhaps noisy to shout. Hey, 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 my naga, we, we get noisy, we shout. <laughs> All right, yeah, man, you know, getting some more insight, man. That's it, that's it. Then you got their language drive. Uh, all right, we know we're talking tribal, and we know we're talking unknown, unknown nagas for them, unknown swarthy nagas, swarthy complexion, as are the Germans. Okay, so no matter where they try to put the twelve tribes of Israel, they're gonna run into us, and that's their issue. That's why they're running scared. That's why they're so sensitive. Yeah, I saw, you know, Kyrie did another apology. I, it, it hurts us all to see what he has to go through, man, just to, you know, to try to be at peace to the best of his ability, man. But we know he lost something, man. You know what I'm saying? When it, come, when it came to that, you know you'll never be the same. You know what I'm saying? And, but my naga, you know what I'm saying? We, we appreciate you, man, for just having the stones, man. You know, whether they finish the job, you can't finish their book for them, man. The, the work ain't done. We don't know what's next for the bro Kyrie. Maybe this is just a, you know, one step to get to another place, man. You know, everybody ain't gonna beat the Kumse out here, man. But you know, we uh we appreciate all y'all, man, just for giving us an opportunity to share the information even more. You know what I'm saying? And 
and get some validation and some interesting conversation going, man, in real time. So, allow why. And, uh, hey, we with you, Kyrie. We with you, yeah. We with you, man. You know, we paying attention, man. Let's go. So, after they talk about the, you know, Europeans and the Spaniards and everybody being swarthy, tawny, which is like a Moor, like a Spaniard, which is black, yada, yada, right? Then he says, what? Well, this is the craziest, weirdest dismount of all time. He said, the principal body of white people of the face of the earth. I wish, I could wish their numbers were increased. I wish there were more pure white people. Because, boy, are we are outnumbered by swarthy blacks in America, found in America, right? <laughs> Europe. And while we are, as I may call it, scouring our planet. So, come on, man. Anytime we ever said the word parasitic, parasite behavior, this is nothing but a body bag, no matter how many times we read it. He's saying, he's saying his people that are barely on the face of the earth, only the English. <laughs> and I don't even give them the Saxons, man, because we know we got Isaac's sons, Isaac's sons, man. So, and the English, I don't, I don't give them that really either, man. I don't really know where they came from, right? So we that's the $64 million question. Because if you're not indigenous to pretty much nowhere in Europe, Africa, or Asia, where the hell did you come from? Now we're on our general muck muck drop. Now we're on a, uh, the big head scientist drop. Now we got to figure out, we got to investigate you a little bit. Who created y'all <laughs> and sent them on us since y'all started admittedly scouring the planet, right? By clearing America of woods, trees, people. <laughs> and so making this side of our globe reflect a brighter light to the eyes of inhabitants in Mars and Venus. Come on. Come on. We see, you know, we see clearly. So who's the inhabitants? Who's the inhabitants in Mars and Venus, come? Are we just talking about their powers? I think this is a body bag that clearly we're just talking about their powers. That this side of the globe reflects a brighter light in the eyes of their powers connected with Mars and Venus. So should we see in the sight of superior beings, body bags. <laughs> Why should we see in the sight of superior beings darken its people? <laughs> Why should we in the sight of superior beings darken its people? What? This is the craziest shit stuff I ever read, man. Every time it's crazy. I told you it's the craziest this now. This is Benjamin Franklin, 1751. Benjamin Franklin. 1751. So again, he says, while we are, as I may call it, scouring our planet by clearing America of woods and so making this side of our globe reflect a brighter light to the eyes of inhabitants in Mars or Venus. Why should we, in the sight of superior beings, darken its people? Why increase the sons of Africa <laughs> or, you know, darkies anywhere, swarthies anywhere? By planting them in America. Why increase the darkies in America? Y'all see this, man? Why increase the sons of Africa by planting them in America? Where we have so fair an opportunity. But now they run the place? By excluding all blacks and tawnies. <laughs> so he wants to exclude any more Nagas because... America is holy so holy swarthy, holy tawny, holy copper color, and so is all of Europe except little England, right? <laughs> or is that a hijack? So they want to look good in the eyes of inhabitants in Mars or Venus. Why should we in the sight of superior beings? Right. Darken its people. 
why increase the sons of all the black people <laughs> by planting them in America? Why increase black people where we have so fair an opportunity because it's just a little bit of us on the face of the earth? Why increase these darkies where we have so fair an opportunity by excluding all blacks and tawnies of increasing the lovely white and red? Okay. But perhaps I am partial to the complexion of my country. I'm partial to the whites in little England. So if you're not talking to English, let's put the English aside. <laughs> and we're talking about, you know, the Irish and uh, the Swedes and Germany. We're talking about Spain and all that. I mean, you know, where do you... Where do you connect any originality? You know what I'm saying? Like where I'm trying to just think about how I would feel if I woke up and realized all of Europe is swarthy and that we've been hiding under all these tents and bywords. We can't call you European because you're not European. <laughs> you're not of the people that were there less than 200 years ago. What happened to all these Nagas in Europe? And how, I mean, how can you not say it's parasitic when you say that you come from this small little proportion of people, but yet now in America, you're trying to regulate how many niggas is in America? Who do you think you are to come to a place that you're not from and regulate and exclude all blacks and tawnies, man, and increase the lovely white? You don't, yeah, okay, well, you, you admit you're, you're scourging the planet. Uh, Aqua Attack, can we get a scourging? Scourge. We got that in 1828. Scourge. Whip, lash, consistent of a strap or cord. Damn, punishment. So they are punishing <laughs> the earth. A punishment is a scourge. Famine. Plague, my naga. <laughs> they are plague. He's admitting that they are literally a plague. And that a little of them, a, a, a tiny bit of them, wants to become the majority. <laughs> so in English, they call you the minority, and you agree to it, and your magic makes it so. You created more of them because you thought there was more of them. Because you thought that's what the world looked like, they became the majority. <laughs> and you became the minority. Because you call yourselves minorities and you call yourselves black. I know they saying you black. We're talking about severity, chastise. I know they saying you black. But now you you're not destitute of life. You're not sad and cloudy looking. Your countenance is stronger than that. And you're definitely not atrociously wicked. Not even wicked. Atrociously wicked. That's not you. You're not horrible. You're not a criminal, Monaga. Not by default. Not in your true order. And really, they make up the majority of the criminals, my nigga, and we already know they ain't even apologizing for their war crimes. You're not dismal, mournful, or calamitous, man. You're not black. They're trying to describe a color in English that has to do with wickedness. They are scourging 
He says, and while we are, as I may call it, scourging our planet. You're, that's a body bag. A scourge is a famine, is a plague. By clearing America of woods, we need those woods. Those are our homes, man. And by doing that, you you made this side of the globe reflect a brighter light to the eyes of inhabitants at Mars and Venus. Why should we, in the sight of superior beings at Mars and Venus, darken its people? Why increase the sons of Africa? By planting them in America. Where we have so fair an opportunity. By excluding all Nigers. All Blacks. All Tonys. Of increasing the lovely white and red. Whatever the hell that means. For them. <laughs> but perhaps I'm partial to the complexion of my country. For such kind of partiality. is natural to mankind. Jewish, Moorish, mankind ain't man. That ain't the real ish. <laughs> mankind, you know, it's kind of like man, you know what I mean? You know, what do they say? I'm just interested. This word that missed the ascent, either of the first or second syllable, the distinct distinction of ascent being inconsiderable. The race or species of human beings, the proper study of mankind is man. A male or the males of the human race, thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. Ka, ka, resembling man in form, not woman. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to stick here on the resembling man in full. Mankind resembles man. You know what I mean? Why do you need mankind when you got man? Man. You know, they try to throw mankind in there right away, but let us make man in our image, not mankind after our likeness. So man, or you know, Whoa, man, you know, it's after the likeness of our frame of shape. That's our likeness is our frame and our shape. That's your plural. Ama Abba. And then they are mankind because they weren't a part of that creation. They didn't pop off out of Ama like that. They weren't made in the image of our frame of shape. They were, they were made in the image of man. They were made in the image of man, right? But they weren't made in the image of Hawa. That's why, you know, we can clearly see, like, yo, like, y'all like another species, huh? And if you're another species, that's cool. We watch Star Trek. <laughs> a lot of species have to live together. You know, I guess that's why they, they say, hey, everybody, it's a melting pot. We got to unify to raise awareness of global warming. Or we need to stop you from scourging or sc scoring, scouring our planet. What I put before scores, let me let me do this right. Scouring our planet. <laughs> but we got we got play, got a scourge. <laughs> scouring. Yeah. yeah. Rubbing hard for cleaning. <laughs> Cleansing by drastic purge. Oh, this is even this is even worse. This is even worse, man. So scourging had to do with a plague and famine. This got to do with a purge, a drastic purge. I'm out of here, boss. You're purging us. You're cleansing. In their minds, they're cleansing us. They're, they're angry. What did they say? Angry. 
anglifying them. That's them uh, cleansing and purging right there, right? Damn, we, we learned a lot. So the scouring is a drastic purge. So whoever their <laughs> superior beings and Mars and Venus are, yeah, that's for you to uh, guess. But where they come from is anybody's guess. <coughs> All right, man, so. Uh, you know, I'm just tripping because, you know, as long as we see that this is all swarthy, we'll start right here. Whether we're talking Africa, Asia, or America, holy so, and all of Europe, except the part they want to claim as English. And the English is the English, and that's why they're saying they're Anglified us. But they're really just scouring and purging us, clearing out our woods, right? Man, all right, let's go. <laughs> that was the intro. <laughs> that was just the, that was just the intro. Uh, we are gonna get into this great drop man, by uh, John Levi. Levi, first I'm gonna do an intro drop. You know, just from my wave surfers. You know, just an oldie but goodie, man. Something we like to, you know, uh, you know. Sometimes it's good to hop back. So out. we're in Norway. First trip together. Hold up, man. I check it. So we're gonna come right back into this Levi drop. And it's going pretty well. This is really dope because I like on our way to tour this troll themed town. We get into a dumb argument. You know what I'm saying? And this is what really, really, uh, uh, everything but right here. Cootie Mayo and John Levi. Yeah, we had a good time. You know, AI the bro legs will definitely uh, put the battery in everybody's back to recon this um uh, this area, you know what I'm saying? We always appreciate that. Let us find the truth. And, you know, I, I love uh, just, you know, getting these cornerstones. You know, these are the cornerstones. So this is just us uh, looking at Google Earth. And, again, since we know America is swarthy and the good old rabbi just said, hey, Utah is Judah, we just got that. The good old rabbi just broke that down. <laughs> Good old rabbi just broke down the Utah Judah connection, so cool. Um, so for us, you know, it's just really a body bag and it's a victory lap. If this is the old world, then no one's making up nothing, man. People are claiming and invading and creating a cover story that is just being made up. LDS Church is just making this up. Joseph Smith, uh, uh, what's his name? Um, uh, I'll get it later, man. You know what I'm saying? Um, ah, what's his name? Starts with a B, but yeah, all these dudes, you know, it's just making up names and renaming cities and all that stuff. So we're going to get all this, man. I'm going to read some of this Mormon drop. <laughs> and uh, damn, all I can say is, hey, congratulations, my noggers, man. You made it this far. This is... 2016 drop. Six years ago, man. You should be proud of yourselves, but not right off the balcony. Shout out to balcony drop. Holla at them balcony drop. Make sure you speak real clear for the people, man. In the back. Let's go. Deuteronomy 34, the death of Moses. And Moses went up from the plains of Moab unto the mountain of Nebo. Let's go. To the top of Pisgah that is over against Jericho. And the Lord showed him all the land of Gilead unto Dan, and all Naphtali, and the land of Ephraim, and Manasseh, and all the land of Judah, unto the utmost sea, and the south, and the plain of the valley of Jericho, and the city of palm trees unto Zor. And the Lord said unto him, This is the land which I swore unto Abraham, Unto Isaac, unto Jacob, saying, I You know, Brigham Young, that's uh, that's the cat I was trying to think about. Starts with a B, Brigham Young. So all these names we're about to get, you know, are in Utah or Judah. And then I'm going to read uh, a document showing how much they really tried to get 
as this Utah territory is much bigger than they actually got granted, they wanted the whole the whole pie. And I'm gonna show you all these all these states they actually tried to get officially recognized <laughs> as the Utah territory. So because they know that that's Judah, all of it, whether you're talking Nevada, California, like all this, and all this is is is, is uh, Mexico, Mexico, Mexico. All this is Moses land. So we just talking Moses, right? Nebo, let's go. And I will give it unto thy seed. I have caused thee to see it with thine eyes, but thou shalt not go over thither. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. And he buried him in a valley in the land of Moab, over against Beth Pure. But no man knows of his septure mm. unto this day. Nobody knows where he's at. Nobody knows. And Moses was 120 years old when he died. His eye was not dim, nor his natural force abated. Never lost. And the children of Israel wept for Moses in the plains of Moab thirty days. So the days of weeping and mourning for Moses were ended. Okay, family, let's do it. Follow me. And Moses went up from the plains of Moab unto the mountain of Nebo. You got Google Earth? Get with it. Well, you will get left off. All right, let's go uh, punch in here. Let's just start this off right. Go to Moab. Everybody knows what I want. And I already know what I want. Moab, you talk. Let's go to Moab. We're going to Moab. We're going to Moab. We're going to Moab. Stop right there. Stop right there. Let's back it up. Okay, family, you see that? We are in the United States Corporation. This is Utah. This is Moab. And Moses went up from the plains of Moab unto the mountain of Nebo. Moab. You think I'm tripping? Right. And you already know, man. Shout out to that King Lex Will, who he sent me on a scavenger hunt. So I am bringing it to you. There you awesome. Shout out to Let Us Find the Truth. Uh, go, let's you know, go. Man, always good. Get uh, tremendous information from that brother. Uh, the whole Columbus drop. Um, you know, what I'm saying straight from that brother. So I definitely want to give the brother his credit. Let us find the truth. That's right. And uh, yeah, I mean, let's just do this quickly for my phone. Uh, goes out here so all right moab you see where it's at now is this the biblical moab or is this some renamed moab situation now, they would want you to think in reverse psychology man just think about what they would want you to think it's not that difficult as hard as the truth seems to seems to be you just gotta look close <laughs> we gotta look real close man real close so is moab in America, and if that's the case, then Mount Nebo is in America. And if that's the case, then Moshe is uh, still buried near Mount Nebo. And his life force was never dimmed, and his eye, <laughs> or his, his eye was never dimmed, whatever that means. And his life force was never abated or lessened. He never got his life force lessened. Which means he's ready to pop off out of suspended animation. <laughs> let's go. Yeah, let's just go quick. All right. Here for me. Just like Lex Will has said, and I just want to give that brother credit for that, man. He's been on it. And, uh, you know, you got to give love, man, when the family is leading you down a, a path of salvation. Uh, chew the meat, spit out the bones, man. Y'all get over it. Stop being uh, petty. We have to understand this is true, this is real. Let's all focus, focus, focus. Mount Nebo, Utah, what's next? I mean, come on, to the top of Pisgah. Come on, I can't be Pisgah, Utah, right? Oh, nah. I can't be no no Pisgah in Utah. Nah, Check man. it out. Nah, man. I'm going, you're doing this with me. I hope <laughs> you got Google Earth, on, Google Earth on your phone. 
Go Pisga. P I S G A H. Utah. All right, let's see what we got. Oh, I gotta put in Mount Pisgah. Excuse the heck out of me. Let's go back. He's trying to jam us up. <laughs> Can't let him jam us up, man. Jam up Joneses, man. They want to see Mount Pisgah in Utah. Oh, snap. They're trying to mess with us. It's all right. It's all right. Stay in there, man. Stay in there, drop. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Pisca, Pisca, Pisca. Mount Pisca Cat. <laughs> Let's go. Mount. Where we at? Mount Pisca. You see that? Catch County, Utah. Look how they try to confuse us. And did we go anywhere? Let's back up a little bit so we can get our orientation. See that we're still in Utah, Mount Pisgah. Let's back it up a little bit. So check it. We know that they name cities. They got Brigham City. They got all that. But when you you know connect this with the fact that you know you was already here, with the fact that you in the east, not the west. Now look, if you still think you in the west, and they didn't flip your map over, and they didn't just find you in the far east. This ain't for you. This class are made for you. This is for the wave surface, the balcony surface. You think he just said, oh, okay, let me find a mountain. I'm going to call that Pisca. I'm going to call this this. I'm going to call that this. Or did he say, you know, to my best guess and assumption, this is Pisca. <laughs> and the body bag for this really, for me personally, is if these were just names they made up, then it wouldn't be hidden. It wouldn't be you know, not that some of these are, you know, like Moab are more popular, but you're going to see some of these I got to really search for. They really tried to change the names and throw us off a little bit. You know what I'm saying? And why would they do that? If it was just a brand new name, then it's no problem. You know, you could just publicize it. But why is some of this stuff so hidden? You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, it's okay for you to know a little, but, you know, they don't want you to know too much. You know, let y'all know I'm not tricking you. Oh, that's Salt Lake City. Mm. Here we go. Mount Pisgah. Okay. Pisgah. Here we go. Salt Lake City. All right. Sorry, I'm going too close to the. There we go. That's a little close. Mount Pisgah, Salt Lake City. What else do we have? We're still in Utah, right? Okay, Moses went up from the plains of Moab I'm to Nebo and to Pisgah is over against Jericho. Let's go fast here. Because you already know I'm getting that. Jericho, Jericho, where are you? Please don't tell me you are in the U. <laughs> Tall. We're in the U? I mean, my mind was blasted last night, though. I'm going to keep it real, child. Mind blasted, man. It's crazy. Okay, crazy. Jericho. We didn't go nowhere. We're still in Utah, Salt Lake City, Utah. Let's back up so we understand where we're at. All right. The average person don't know about no Jericho, Utah. This is not publicized. This is just when you're looking closer, you're like, oh, okay. And then you fall into the first, uh, you know, you know, whatever their cover story is. Oh, yeah, the Mormons, and they named these city. You're like, oh, okay, cool, cool. Since when did the cover story become the facts, man? Benjamin Franklin just said you were wholly swarthy over here. <laughs> if you wholly swarthy, that means you're wholly so-called black here. Black people, right? Indigenous copper color Americans, you're already here. So that's not a world they publicize. But it's partially documented in the Mormon, Book of Mormon, under the Nephi and all these titles. You know what I'm saying? We got to dig on the Morani flow because Mormon is a person. Morani, all the, these, are per, these are people. We're talking about their priest kings and cons that they are highlighting, their Joshua flow. We got to try to, you know, put the sticks together, man. Shout out to Big Judah, you know what I'm saying? But we got to dodge all hijacks at all costs. Average person doesn't know about Jericho.
these are these are places, man, that are pretty much they got little, you know, a little bit of civilization going through some of these, but for the most part, it's just a bunch of you know areas that are you know out of bounds for you to really go you know really deep in or you know a lot of ranges what they'll call ruins and yada yada like it's not too far-fetched man <laughs> to say that yo what happened and john leva levi is about to really go into you know he got you know <laughs> he got his google earth going and you know we're going to go into these cities even more and see what he got to say about it man you know he's a top-notch reconner right so yeah were, were they just put here or is there so much more happening and a lot of these things that look like little mountains are just blasted castles and you know we don't know what's going on man <laughs> it's like all kinds of it's a whole other story that's been buried right you can't just say i went to a bunch of public or you know parks and you know, I took some hikes and I saw some things. Oops, I didn't see the tabernacles. Uh, I guess I got to go to the Middle East. <laughs> it's so much buried, man. You can't even, how dare you even fix your mouth to say you've seen anything. You've only seen what they've allowed you to see, fool. My naga. <laughs> so we got to empty our cups and not be afraid of what, you know, gets poured into that mug. Let's go. This is Utah. All right, oh, come on now, come on now, Jericho, come on now, come on, where you at, don't play, Jericho, this is Utah, okay, here we go, Jericho, Utah, all right, so we got Moab, back up a little bit for you, all right, so we got Utah, see that clearly, I think. All right, cool. Utah. This is Moab, Nebo, Jericho. All right, Pitch Guy was over there, seen too. So so far we have everything right there. What else? And the Lord showed him all the land of Gilead. Is there a Gilead in Utah? All right, going once, going twice. What does the survey say, family? If your mind ain't blown yet. And you need some wake up juice, man. I don't know what to tell you. Gilead, Utah. What? Gilead Way. Oh, wow. So that's Utah. Boom. That's Moab. Remember? All right. We have Pisgah over there. We have Jericho somewhere over here. This is Gilead. And what you'll find is that all this is the land of Gilead. Right there. And Moses went up from the plains of Moab unto the Mount Nebo to the top of Pisgah that is over against Jericho. And the Lord showed him all the land of Gilead unto Dan. This is the tricky one because they're going to try to fool you. You can't just put in Dan. These little uh, suckers they renamed it to Daniel. That's right. Daniel, mother effing Utah. This is my point. This is my That's point. Dan. It's my point. Even with Gilead Way, why why are you calling it Gilead Way? <laughs> you know, not just the city of Gilead. Why you gotta call it Daniel, not just the city of Dan? You know what I mean? It's a little trickery in there to let you know, like, nah, they ain't really straight up in your face bone telling you, here's our fake biblical world. They don't want to bring that much attention to it, so we'll just, you know, Horace Butler this thing, one letter rule this thing, switch it up a little bit. And it would be no none of this trickery and switchery if they had just made up some stuff. They would have nothing to hide. They would only be doing this, Monog, if they were, <laughs> you know, pretty much saying, look, to the learned, here's a bread, here's a breadcrumb, you know, here's a trail you can follow if you're looking, but we're not gonna announce that this is the city of Dan. Nah, man. Gilead, Dan. Moab, all right? Come on. Let's go. Deal with me? Let's go. Moab, Gilead, Dan. Where else did he go? And Neptali. Uh-oh. <laughs> Come on. How you? Let's go. How you spell Neptali? <laughs> you know, 
you don't you don't spell that word every day. Yeah, that's true. Tyler, Tyler. M A F. Tyler. This is what's funny is that sometimes it's not even named it anymore, but they're still going to go there. Look, I just put Neptali in, and they just take me yeah, over yeah. to this little area. Hey, that's Moab. That's Utah. So Neptali must be Moab. over here. Why did the GPS? So weird shift me down a little bit in Utah when I put in Eptali. They went somewhere. It's just not named as a city. And if the Mormons just named a bunch of these cities, then Neptali would be the fabulous city of Neptali. <laughs> it would be a big deal. It wouldn't be hidden, my naga. This lets me know they hiding something and to reverse everything they saying because they're hiding something. So by default, I got to say, yo, maybe you didn't name this stuff because then you would have nothing to hide. Just by virtue. Look, they just took us over here. I just went to. Neptali, you see that? Right here. That's Neptali. I typed it in and they took me right here into Utah. <laughs> so far. And the land of Ephraim. Most of y'all that know Utah already know this Ephraim in Utah. Excuse me. Ephraim, Utah. It just comes right up. Ephraim. We didn't go nowhere. We are still in Utah. That is still Moab. This is still Ephraim. That is still Jericho. And that is still Utah. Come on. And Manasseh. Is there a Manasseh in a Utah? Do we have a Manasseh? Manasseh, Manasseh, Manasseh. Manasseh in Utah. Look, where are they taking us? They just took us over. They're just taking us over here, where the Great Salt Lake is. In mother effing Utah. That's Manasseh over here. Moab. Manasseh's over here. Why is all the kingdoms of Israel in Utah? Where the Aztec homeland is. That is the land of the Aslan. That's the Aztec homeland. Uh-oh, boss. The Aztec homeland is in Utah and the entire kingdom of Israel. You'll find it when you put it in Google Earth in Utah. What is going on? And the land of Judah. Very interesting. You type in Judah, Utah. Where's it gonna take us? Mm -hmm. You know it's not called Judah no more. Uh oh. Utah. That would just be crazy. But where does it take us? Does it take us somewhere crazy? Does it say I can't find it? Whoa. Judah, Utah. Oh wait. Now it's gonna go crazy and take me to Nebraska. Don't play. We've been through this. Judah. Utah. Come on, don't you play now. Yeah, it just wants to act crazy now. You check it out though. Last time it took me to Golden Spike. Judah City, I believe, in Utah. Ah, I put in Judah City. Ah, wait a minute. It took me to Golden Spike, I think Utah. They call in Judah Golden Spike. And look what they put. Look, they got their church. You know what I'm saying? You go in close. Man, these people put up town halls and stuff. This is when the Mormons came in and started renaming everything. When you look at the um, uh, the Canyonlands, uh, the Zion National Park, all the national... Uh, preserves that they still have there that's what they've done you know what I'm saying they've uh, preserved whatever but that land is still that land and they named it all biblical names because they knew it where they were they were in the Aztec homeland they knew the Aztec were Israelites and they were following Moses Bang. and even like uh, Angel Falls and Zion Park got a lot of drop you know what I'm saying connected with that it's a lot of drop man I mean what y'all think you know, it's just, uh, I mean, I want to recon a little more, you know, I don't know now, but, you know, eventually to that golden spot, you, 
that golden spike situation, man. I think that got some breadcrumbs for real, for real. Some drizzle. And he died there in the land of Moab. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. Go back. What they've done. You know what I'm saying? They've uh, preserved whatever. But that land is still that land. And they named it all biblical names. Cause they... Look, they got their church. You know what I'm saying? You go in close. Golden Spike. Effing you yeah, this golden spike situation, man. It's almost like X marks the spot, man. Golden spike, man. Oh, they calling you the golden spike? And look what they put. Look, they got their church. You know what I'm saying? You go in close. Man, these people put up town halls and stuff. This is when the Mormons... Oh. Came in and started renaming everything. When you look at the um, uh, the Canyon Lands, uh, but they didn't rename it to Judah City. They renamed it to Golden Spike. They renamed it from Dan to Daniel, <laughs> and they kept some things the same. That's the only way I can explain it. Because if it was all their stuff, it would just be their stuff. It wouldn't be no changing it. It's their city, right? They would call it Ephraim, Manasseh, and Natalia. But Natalia ain't, ain't even showing up. Judah's called Golden Spike, man. Uh, the Zion National Park, all the national uh, preserves that they still have there, that's what they've done. You know what I'm saying? They've uh, preserved whatever. But that land is still that land, and they named it all biblical names because they knew it where they were. They were in the Aztec homeland. They knew the Aztec were Israelites, and they were following Moses. God. And he died there in the land of Moab. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. Mm. And he was buried in the valley of the land of Moab over against Beth Pure. Just for fun. Can we find a Beth Pure, Utah? Sorry for my dusty. Come on, just for fun. Sorry for my dusty dryer, man. It's about Beth to be Pure, <laughs> Utah. Hey, man. Come on. <laughs> Where you going to take me? Where we going? They just went over here. Look. That's Moab. He said it was buried around Beth Pure in the Valley of Beth Pure. Right there. Yeah. Beth Pure, Utah. Even if they don't call it that, they're still if, taking you to those. If the Mormons named it, it would be still called Beth Pure, is my point. The fact that GPS knows where to go, but there's no title or name, something is being hidden. You don't just name stuff and then hide stuff. You hide stuff and rename stuff or take it off the map. Those areas. So go do this yourself. Google Earth. The entire kingdom of Israel is in Utah. Man. Moab. Ephraim's over there. Uh, believe Judah. Um, where's that golden spike again? It's there. It says all the way to the seas. Uh, how did he say it? The land. Of Zawar. Why would you look at that? Yeah. Abraham. Oh, land of Judah unto the utmost sea. So I believe either that's land of Judah stretched uh, all the way to the sea this way, or you can look at it as land of Judah going all the way to this particular utmost sea, this particular area here. Now we're going to get, you know, the proximity that the Mormons were, you know, trying to officially. <laughs> get as the Mormon, you know, set up the the, the Mormon, uh, you know, conglomerate of states. Yeah, I think it goes all the way to California uh, coast for sure. You know what I'm saying? And Ahab to the Queen, Queen Khalifa, as we start to see clearly. Yeah. Either way, it's in Utah, folks, man. So again, shout out to Lex Will for the drop. Come, come. Home for Simon King. Keep it coming. Let's go, man. Hey, you know, we were inspired back then. We're inspired now. You know, you know, Drop Nation, a bunch of noggins dropping that drop. And, you know, this is what we've been doing, man. So it's great to visit the 2016 King drop. <laughs> and uh, you see, you know, this, this is uh, evidence of a consistent study. Consistent growth, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, just no one's giving up on the on the mission, man. 
know what I'm saying, to ask the right questions. So, hey, uh, let's jump right in to John Levi. And then we're going to dismount with the bro Cootie Mayo. Cootie Mayo. <laughs> hey, out to the, the con Cootie Mayo. You might be asking yourself, can you actually create high quality live streams for free? <laughs> this is one of the moves uh, that the bro dropped and redropped and continued to Yeah, so they have to cootie mayo. Yeah, let's it go, man. It's, it's, it's fun to research us. You know, that's all I can say. John Levi. Take the wheel. We could imagine Utah to the Western Sea. And if California was an island, this Ooh. distance would be even shorter. The south and the plain okay. of the Valley of Jericho, the city of palm trees, as far as Zoar. Then the Lord said to him, This is the land which I swore to give to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying, I will give it to your descendants. I have caused you to see it with your eyes, but you shall not cross over there. And ultimately Moses dies in Moab. Really interesting, I just made a video on mysterious bones found in Moab. They were just swept under the rug. Maybe that was Moses. We'll never know. Uh -oh. Or will we? And they buried him in Moab opposite Beth Peor. But no one knows the grave to this day. I mean, we should be very careful when digging in Moab. Any Moab. But I digress. So here he's showing us Wiki's version of the tribe of Judah. According to the Hebrew Bible, the tribe of Judah was one of the 12 tribes of Israel. So one of 12. The tribes scattered, of course. And would it be so unreasonable to conceive that people of old were moving all throughout this realm. I don't think so. When we see the ruins, it's very clear to us that people were doing so for great amounts of time. And only in the last 200 years did we lose the ability to move freely, but also forget that we had the ability to in the past. And it would take us a couple hundred years to rehash everything. He points out here that there was no J, so Judah, already sounding more like Utah or Yuda. We have many Ute Indians. In fact, I live on the Ute Res, one of them. So the first thing he does is take us to the plains of Moab. And today it's Moab, a nice little touristy town. I love Moab. It's a little busy now. It seems to have gotten popular. But again, the whole place looks like the remains of a biblical city, mega city. It was just completely cooked. I mean, how do we know? We can't say we've been to some of these, you know, theme parks or public parks or whatever you want to call them, man. And we seen anything, you know, they, they section off what they want us to see. Even around the Grand Canyon is over a million, 200,000 acres that's cut off. There's cut off acres, like a million cut off acres in Georgia, right? Georgia, man. <laughs> so we know in Utah, there's all this cut off BLM land, federal land. What would, what do you expect the hijack to do? Let you see every part of you? You can live in your cities, New York City, California, Atlanta, and these cities, and not know nothing about America. But you think you're in your city, so there can't be real cities out there, right? There can't be biblical cities. <laughs> oh, you'll see, boss. You'll see, man. Looked and ravaged, but not the point of this video today. Here again, we see the plains of Moab. Very interesting. Over here to the right, Castle Valley. To the north, Arches National Park. To the east, the beautiful LaSalle Mountains. Just gorgeous forest and 13,000 foot peaks. Just a perfect area. Best of all worlds. And next, this passage says, he went up to Mount Nebo. So he now takes us to Mount Nebo. And he's just reaching. I mean, he just punches in this stuff. 
after reading it in the biblical passages, not knowing if there's going to even be a Mount Nebo. And sure enough, there is. Down here by Provo. And Provo, just south of Salt Lake City, an hour in a car. And here, really, Moab to Mount Nebo is going to be like five hours. Oh, here, they tell us. I'm not sure. And is Moses walking? Or does he have some other means? Maybe a magic carpet? And we can't dismiss anything with Moses. After all, he's talking to burning bushes, parting seas, turning rods into serpents, or vice versa. So anyway, he goes from Moab, more or less, to Salt Lake City, to the edge of the now wasteland XC. And I think if California was an island like we see on the old maps, this may have been extensions of of the edge of the sea with little island remember after the flood the water levels were higher and because of that you have more of these seas and rivers and all that so just because you don't see it right now doesn't mean it's not there when the water levels rise and as they fall you know more land is exposed and seas are swallowed up you got waters beneath the waters and all types of stuff but you know keep an open mind man <laughs> we need my fossil looking at this stuff too. You'll be seeing dragons all over the place. Islands popping up, being mountain ranges now. But up here we move into a high plateau. This would have been the edge. And so here. And look at all this fluty stuff. Look at all this fluty stuff. Clearly, <laughs> that's where the dragon was breathing. Y'all, y'all see it, man. Let's go. <laughs> He was brought to this Mount Nebo to view the vastness that the Lord had promised him, or his ancestors, or his sons, or something. Let's see. So it says 200 miles here. He traveled 200 miles from Moab to Mount Nebo to the top of Pisgah. I think Pisgah is a mountain top. So here he's punched in Mount Nebo to Pisgah. From there he goes north. Pretty much to Brigham City, even further north than Ogden. I mean, it's a little drive to Ogden from Salt Lake. It wouldn't be bad if there wasn't traffic. But here, Moses went to Mount Pisgah. And again, we have a Mount Pisgah. That's the most fascinating part, is that not only are there mountains that are lining up with this Bible verse in Utah or Judah, of course, there was no J, so it would have been pronounced more like a Y. And sure enough, we have a path from Moab up here to Brigham City. Super fascinating. And Brigham, the founder, the supposed. <laughs> it's awesome, man. It's 2022. And, you know, we just watched the drive from six years ago off the balcony. And, you know what I'm saying? Some of these reconners are just now becoming fascinated, you know what I'm saying? With some of the drop, the drop nation, you know what I mean? It was, you know, is flowing in, you know, we've. We always come back to it because these are foundational pieces, man. And uh, the logic makes sense. You know that no one's going to be hiding something that is just purely fake. But to see them hiding lets you know that there's reality and you got to see clearly. Posed founder of Utah and all this and how interesting it's like they've replaced him in the narrative with Moses and really taking this pilgrimage. And did they know? Did the writers of the new history, or the founders of Utah, for example, if we're using the mainstream narrative, did they just name everything according to the potential path of Moses? Can't imagine. I can't imagine. And in this community, we realize that many of these names have carried over, and many have been changed, many places destroyed, and history erased and forgotten. But I'm gonna have to bet on not by accident. Whether this is true or not, still, not by accident. Who named something Mount Pisgah? Not sounding very Mormon-like. And of course, there will be a narrative. Elder Joseph Pisgah was the first to climb this mountain. Something like that. But here it is, and here it coincides with the Bible. And it says, the top of Pisgah, which is across from Jericho, now from Mount Pisgah to Jericho. There we have Jericho. Not far from the Dugway Proving Grounds. If you don't know, the Dugway Proving Grounds are the, or said to be, the new Area 51. 
uh, DPG, <laughs> the, the Douglas Proven Grounds, man. That's the real DPG. And that's where they're doing a lot of experimenting. Now, what are they experimenting on? What are they tapped into? We got some dragons. I mean, what are they tapped into over here that's so secretive? In Judah City, near Jericho. <laughs> Let's go. All kinds of shady stuff going on out here. Under and above ground and off limits. And here yeah. we have Jericho. And I've looked at these areas before, spotting all kinds of what I believe are ancient anomalies buried that we can see poking out. Going back to some of my earliest videos, and it's out here in the southern Salt Lake wastelands here. And little did I really ever put it together. Little did I know I'd be on this path of Moses that has now led me back to Jericho. So sure enough, it's not like Mount Pisgah was not across from Jericho. It was across from Jericho. So now we actually know that this may potentially be a biblical city. All of these. The bones of Moses may be sitting in a gift shop in Moab. And absolutely fascinating. And in short, he just goes on and follows this path. And I'll leave a link to his video. But it completely corresponds. He goes everywhere. And we have corresponding cities following this biblical verse found in Utah. Come on, my naga, Daniel instead of Dad. I mean, that right there, you know, it's just, <laughs> let's go. Daniel instead of Dad. Why not call it Dan? If that's all it is. Shout out to John Levi, Levi. I'm a Levi. <laughs> Levi, Levi, I'm going to leave a link to the bro. And you can get more. He goes into, man, I'm actually belly flopping a little bit. He goes into, you know, this California situation. And on the side of the road up in Cali, just like this situation, <laughs> he's looking at it like, yo, this is all brick. Like, this is all, like, melted, you know, brick, like, they purposely melted these brick, but here they, they didn't finish the job. You can see the red brick inside of it. Like, what was this? What type of castle? What type of structure? What happened? Almost like it got hit with some dragon blast, man. Some dragon fire, man. Side in California, under the sleeping noses of these people, castles of brick in ruins. Not even having a name, just the side of the highway, Highway 1. So at first he zooms up here and we see preservation, seeming pointless now, buildings gone, but we see this massive wall. Look at this little man. I mean, again, we could be anywhere, anywhere. Most people just take such things for granted. Look at these terraced levels of wall. And now he's panning over to the thousand foot cliff face here that we are just looking at. So here he is, and these are some of the first things we see. Here again, the possible covering up. We see brick lines underneath it right here. That is a brick line pattern. Boom. Anyway, this is nothing. We move on. We see a lot of lime just flowing out of this. And I've seen a lot of this, reminding me of like a zoo where they try to make the animal's prison look more natural. And here, we can see the edge, where the resources ran out and they stopped facading. And we see flowing brick. And what is it doing here? Covering the side of a thousand foot mountain. Well, we know, we know, but what would they say? There's not even a name for this. Anyway, if anyone has doubts, we'll just keep moving on. Your doubts shall disappear. So here we go, a great example. We see the block fusing into blobs. And then over here on the left, we see perfect brick. And it's a great showcase for showing the brick fusing into what people would call natural rock. So we really see this transition. Here we go, red bricks and transitioning into what seems like stone, but it's clearly not stone. It's all brick, and it's the edge of the land. This is the edge of the American Western landmass. 
Again, somebody might say, oh no, this is not brick. Wait till he breaks out with the hammer. Here again, just warming up. There we go. There we go. There's your first stamp. T car down Whoa. there. A stamped brick. <laughs> they got stamped bricks in the room. <laughs> what in the world is this, man? A quality brick. And here he goes. Boom. First hit of the hammer. And look at this piece of brick. Just beautiful on the inside still. And here we can see another stamped one down here. And all of this is brick. Just in different conditions. And just very grateful that he's out here with a hammer. Dispelling any shadow of a doubt as to what we're actually seeing. So here he's just off the road. As we saw, it's the whole mountainside. Here we're closer to that. I mean, they just put sh concrete and streets and rebuild and a whole new civilization, man. But this wasn't that long ago, my nigga. Polygonalism at its finest, explaining it all. Different parts heating to different temperatures. And down here, everything just turning solid rock. He said heating in different te temperatures, so something happened very hot. He said lava, I say dragon fire. Solid rock, at least the entire right side appearing to be a solid rock. And here, if we didn't see the pattern all around it, we wouldn't know. And yet this was also brick. All the stages revealed in this one photo. And screen. I mean, something blasted the shit out of this place. Kamahamaha over here, man. It's amazing. And here he's hitting it. It's very solid. More solid than the brick melt surrounding it. So what was this core? I'm not sure. What an awesome boots on the ground this is. Wow, hey. Get the drop from John Levi, man. Before we get into this great coup de mayo dismount, you know, I just want to Remind my nagas a couple things, man, when it comes to this Mormonism situation. This is from the FairLatterDaySaints.org. All right, all right, they're talking about different subjects. It is claimed that Joseph Smith is clearly the author of the Book of Mormon because many books of Mormon place names supposedly have clear evidence. of, quote, borrowing from geographic locations in the United States and Canada. What well, we know is taking place right here. And here's some interesting Mormon cities and what they claim as the source. Now, this is why we got to get into this Book of Mormon and these cities and this story, this indigenous story, right? Because you got Tiyanakum. The cool means to rise, cool. Come, come here, come, right. Take team Kum is to Kum say. Now we're speaking our language, man. Now we're speaking Shikamagua. Right connected with the Book of Mormon. We just connected to Kum say with the Book of Mormon. Yo, hey, it's up, man. <laughs> Easy say it's up. So it's up, man. Of course, you got Moron, Maureen, more Moravine. So you got to do with the Moors, right? The Moor man, Moorish. Anida, Anida. Jacob Bugath is Jacob's birth. <laughs> Alma is Alma. Shalom is Shiloh. Okay. Rama Rama. Ogath, Quebec. Angola, Angola. Is it Angola? I thought there was only in Africa. Goat. That's crazy. Kishkuma. Kish Kish Kimetis. Kish Kish. Uh -huh. We're talking biblical tribes. Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Land of Lehi. Lehi Nephi. Lehi. Ripple Nikum is Ripple Lake. <laughs> Ripple Lake. Ripple and Cool. All right. Back to that rising. All right. All right. I just thought that was interesting, man. Just checking out these place names. Let's get another drop. This is uh, Moab slash Utah. Where did the name Moab come from? The name Moab is a biblical name for a land just sort of the promised land. The Moabites were historically regarded as the perpetual enemy. 
that would be Satan. You know, Satan would be an adversary. <laughs> Who's your Satan, man? Perpetual means forever, man. So that means even today, even today, starting way back on this hijack here, <laughs> Roman Emperor Charles V, Young, man. Shout out to everybody, you know, digging on the Yanga drop, the Inca drop, the Naga drop. Because really, like my Nagas is pointing out very clear. The Y-N-G-A. N-G-A is Naga, my Naga. <laughs> so these are Nagas. N-G-A. <laughs> my Aqua Leona say she spelled Inglewood, but she spelled it with the Y-N-G-L <laughs> wood. You know what I mean? And you, we, you know, we're saying what it is. Just like Angle. He wants to angle out Benjamin Faker. Wants to anglize, anglify, but we're just talking angle, angle. <laughs> the NG is the Inca, is the young oh, man. So much fun. It surfed away. But look. So, God's chosen people are right, physically the region was a green, verdant valley in the middle of a serious desert, an emerald in the sand, so to speak, because of those similarities. Our little town was dubbed Moab. So this is their cover story. All right. They want you. This is my point. They want you to believe this. And then when we tell you these names are here, you say, yeah, the Mormons got it because you've been brainwashed. And this is what they tell you to regurgitate. Our little town was dubbed Moab by Mormon settlers in 1800s. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because of the similarities with the real Moab, right? <laughs> All these places got similarities. Like like Joseph Smith been to the real Moab and then came over here and said, hey, this Moab is just like the Moab in the Middle East, man. Or did he know exactly that this was Moab, is Moab? Yeah, you know, Moab, lots of older daughter had a son his daughter had a son his daughter had a son so y'all started off in chaos man we we, we try to make order out of y'all but you started off in chaos man you know what i'm saying like this is your origin story man. we got you know two different frequencies my you know what i'm saying <laughs> it's like you started off in chaos lot's older daughter had a son named moet okay man uh, let's see. Last one is this, and we popping off with Kurime. Oh, what's this? Oh, it's another interesting drop. We'll get to. Matter of fact, let's get this one now. Cityweekly.net. Utah is the promised land. So this is Dwayne Erickson. He's talking about having evidence of Noah, Adam, and Eve. In America, man, yeah. Among the many who have asked the unanswered riddle of where and how life began is Dwayne Erickson. Raised by a Mormon family, Erickson grew up regarding the accounts of Adam and Eve, Noah's Ark, and the Nephites. So he already... He's confident because he already knows the Mormon family let him know this is the ancient world. This is the biblical world. He has no doubt about it. So he's just furthering the investigation at this point. And after extensively studying such biblical texts, Erickson became determined to prove that such tales are in fact true and occurred in Utah. What? Noah's Ark? Adam and Eve in Utah? Wow. Erickson will back up his theories at, at a seminar where artifacts will be available for study in Evan Evanston, Wyoming. And we're going to talk Wyoming, man. <laughs> you know, I, there's a lot going on in Wyoming, man. Uh, let's just get to it, man. Yeah, you know, what drew you to this line of research? They asked him. He said it sort of sprang from religious roots. <laughs> Biblical roots, right? That prompted me to dig deeper than normal. Yeah, we got a new series called Mormons Digging Deeper, man. So this is perfect. 
and try to figure out where we come from. We man, we on the same investigation, Erickson, man. Let's go. How we got here. What we are supposed to accomplish while we're here. What evidence have you found so far? They said. He says the evidence is more ge geologically oriented. If there was a Noah, there was a flood. If there was a flood, there should be ge geological evidence of that flood. I have all kinds of geological evidence for the flood. Some of that evidence, which is right here in Utah and Wyoming, is the flat top mesas or the tree stumps like Mount Roraima. The mighty silica crystal trees, man. And back when mountains were trees, can you feel the breeze? Silicon, right? Silica crystal umbilical giant tree severed fro digital. Yeah, man. Framer and the shape of all the makers. Fallen angel. <laughs> Fallen forest. Rapers. Hey, look out for the new drop, man. With mountains of trees. <laughs> Some of that evidence is right here in Utah, Wyoming. Flat top mesas. Uh huh. Tree stumps, mighty trees. Those flat top mesas were the product of a flood. The top parts of the mesas that are perfectly flat were the bottom of water at one time. Whoa, he's giving some drop. He's giving some drop, Erickson. What a dismount, man. So he's saying, you know, it could all be one thing, it could still be sliced up trees. And they could be the bottom of oceans, too. Right? <laughs> the bottom of water at one time. Whoa. I have found the ruins located in the Yunta Mountains where people lived when they built the ark. The Yunta Mountains, right? Just connecting it. All right, we're just talking Utah, of course. I mean, of course, I'm just saying. High, pristine mountain area in northeastern Utah that's popular for fishing, hiking, backpacking, yada, yada. Or uh, is it connecting to the origin of creation? This research is connecting it to Adam and Eve, my neck, my neck. You and Tom Mountains, where people live when they build the ark. What is the promised land? They ask. He says the promised land is the motherland of Adam. He didn't say Africa, boss. He didn't say Africa, boss. These Mormons ain't saying that, boss. That's why it's called promised land. If you were a Book of Mormon reader, it tells you that. The name Promised Land was used clear back at that time when people, the lost tribes of Israel, were leaving Jerusalem and were going to what they believed was the Promised Land. Before then, there was a group of people that came here to Utah that was about 2000 B.C. They also were supposedly guided to what has become the Promised Land. Or it could be all the same story, just, you know, push back in chronologies different dates but well, let's go or it could be repeating itself <laughs> where are the tombs of adam and eve here we go i don't like to tell people sp specifically <laughs> so automatically he, he got real close on this one is i don't like to tell people specifically because i don't want people there with their pick and shovel but they are in the high parts of the yunta mountain The burial of Adam and Eve are in the high parts, the high parts, the high parts of the Yunta Mountains, boss. Is that what you're saying, boss? Birdman hand rub, boss. <laughs> the plot is thickening, man. Uh huh. High parts. Remember, the etymology of Utah is just high. <laughs> Let's put it in etymology. Etymology line. Love the letters, find the truth. The bros been giving us drive for a long time, man. Utah 
All right, so the specific territory is organized 1850, but we know as a land, it's always been here from Spanish Utah. Remember, the Spanish are swarthy, okay? Utah, Utah, Aztec, and people of the Great Basin. Ute is Judah, Managa is Udah or High. Lofty high. Let's go. Judah, the scepter will never depart, right? High in the mountains is Adam and Eve, according to Erickson. I don't like to tell people where the tombs of Adam and Eve are, but they're in the high parts of the Unta Mountains. Adam and Eve are above the water level of the flood. They're above the water level of the flood. So Utah means high, right? Well, you know, this is starting to make a lot of sense because you have to be in a high place for civilization to pop off first. If you're in a lower place, civilization is underwater. It's not going to pop off. That's why I love the Cuda Mayo and a lot of reconners on, you know, digging on these resources, especially these Masonic books and all that where – is letting you know that America was the first land to pop out the primordial waters. Primordial. First land to pop off to pop off after the flood. So this is why it's ancient. This is why you gotta call it mama. You know what I'm saying? This is why you gotta call it India. Superior boss. Florida, Mexico, China, Catholic. <laughs> India is superior. You got to call it superior because it's high. It's higher than Africa. It's higher than Europe. It's higher. So you have the ancient world popping off here first, just like with the Adam and Eve flow, according to the recon of Erickson. Adam and Eve are above the water level of the flood. High. <laughs> Yunta. So not only are you high, not only are you high in Judah, but you have to go even higher in the Yunta flow because the Yunta mountains are high, pristine mountains. That means pure, pure, man, right? Pristine. Northeast Utah. Okay, most of the Utah mountain range is contained within the Ashley National Forest. So, of course, they had to federalize it, established 1908 by President Theodore Roosevelt. Whoa, <laughs> the president had to establish this one right here, boss. It includes 460,000 acres, and it's the largest wilderness area in Utah. It's the largest wilderness in Utah. We're talking the wilderness, huh? So what wilderness did Moshe, you know, to Joshua and them had to, you know, go to? This is the largest wilderness in Utah. It's high. The, the Uinta range is high in Utah. And we already know that Utah is high, Utah. So they had to go even higher. <laughs> To get this learning, boss. Now it's called the Ashley National Forest. So we got to recon that and see, you know, what type of crumbs we can find around things discovered in this area in the Ashley National Forest. Con. Okay. Okay, Erickson. Okay. <laughs> High parts in the Utah mountains. Adam and Eve are Adam and Eve are above the water level of the flood. That's why they are not fossilized, but they are mummified. According to the man who saw them, they are beautiful. Here's the hijack. Here's the conjecture. <laughs> Eve is supposedly supposed to have long 
blonde, strawberry blonde hair. Stop it, IJ. Just cut it out, man. Just cut it, man. Just stop it, man. Get out of here, man. <laughs> wow. So this is just another investigation popping off of Dwayne Erickson, man. Wow, right? Wowzers, right? I'll leave this link for you. Why the Mormons settled in Utah. And, you know, like I said, we're going to probably pop off with this one. You know, digging all the Mormons, digging deeper drive because, you know, it pops off around this new leader, Brigham Young, man. And he's leading him through the wilderness like Moses, like John Levy, John Levi said. Yeah. And they're all around the Great Salt Lake. And, you know. And then Joseph Smith is is jailed, he's killed. So, you know, what happened there? Did, did, did Brigham Young set him up so he could be the man? Huh? Forced to flee anti-Mormon hostility in New York, Ohio, Missouri, 1831, 1839, Smith and other church members arrived in Nouveau, 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 Illinois, on the banks of the Mississippi River, jailed in Missouri, Smith was allowed to escape to Illinois, where he helped build Nuvu into a thriving city. Then, mid 1843, after Missouri's governor blamed a failed assassination attempt on Morgan at Mormon agitators, the governor of Illinois, Thomas Ford, agreed to extradite Smith to face trial. So they, were, they you know, they were going at these Mormons. Now, are these white people? Everything else has been changed. <laughs> or are these moors? Yeah, man. It's a lot of history here. 1844, a mob gathered at the jail and killed Smith and his brother Hiram. There's a depiction of it, right? So he was basically just murdered, just crucified. Who's the real Joseph Smith? <laughs> oh, there wasn't a large Native American presence. Yeah, okay, I wonder why. <laughs> you just got here in the late 1800s, man. It's a lot been going on to clear out the Naga, to clear the Naga out. Now, this is the part right here. When Utah becomes part of the U.S., Young sees an opportunity to control a state government. So he was trying to, like, build a government, you know, within this, you know, really rivaling this, you know, corporation at that time. They're already going at against the presidents. And then, right, so when Young and his followers first arrived in Salt, Great Salt Lake, the region was still part of Mexican territory. Mexica, all this is Mexico. <laughs> Meshi, Moshe, Ka, Ka, Presta John, right? But in early 1848, Mexico ceded some 525,000 square miles of its territory to the United States at the end of the Mexican American War. So only because the hijack war did Mexica, the Mexican, lose half a million acres. And that's the only reason why present-day Arizona, California, Colorado, New Mexico, and Wyoming are not called Mexico. But California is still Mexico. Colorado is still Mexico. New Mexico is still Mexico. Wyoming is Mexico. Utah is Mexico. All this is Mexi, Mexi, Moshe. Talking about Deuteronomy, right? <laughs> Tribes of Moses, Mount Nebo, right? So Young saw an opportunity in this turn of events. State governments had a lot of power. All right, so what do you want to do? <laughs> he sent representatives to Congress with a proposed map of the state of Deseret, meaning honeybee. The state would have been massive. So he wanted to make a state called Deseret or Desert. <laughs> or honeybee, and that state would have been massive, encompassing Utah, most of Nevada, B 
big chunks of Colorado, Arizona, New Mexico, and Idaho, and even the city of San Diego, who are part of California. So this original plan that Brigham Young wanted, <laughs> he wanted not just the Utah you see as the Utah Territory today. He wanted Colorado, Nevada, Arizona, New Mexico, Idaho, and California. You know what I'm saying? Now, why? Because he knew at one time it was all Mexico. And he had to know that Mexico is Moses. Moshe, Meshi. Meshi, Moshe. Khan, Meshi Khan. So, he's really giving us the drop that all of this would have been Judah. Managa, all this is Utah. All this is Judah. Because instead of giving them all that, instead of giving them Colorado, Arizona, New Mexico, and Idaho, and a big chunk of California, too, Instead, in 1850, Congress greatly reduced Deseret size and renamed it Utah Territory. Interesting points, right? So what they call the territory of Utah today, even we have maps that have Arizona as part of Utah. Uh, there was no Arizona on these maps, or so Colorado was all Utah, so now we see why. And this is why they want it. Deseret, because that really is Judah. You know, they all that is Judah. All this is Judah. And they tried to get the whole thing. Instead, they just got what they got. <laughs> but it lets you know what really is yours. And everything, all of it's yours, man. All of it's yours, man. These hijacks can't claim us, Big Dragon, Judah, Big Dragon, India Superior. They can't claim this, man. All right, so I'll leave these links for you. Surf the wave in real time. And just enjoy the flow, man. As we continue to build, you know, share your drop, man. It's going to be so much to dig on. You know what I'm saying? Just know that they found you, Tawny, Holy Soul, <laughs> Swarthy, Holy Soul, no matter where you at. No matter where you at. And they just make up a small percentage. And they are still serving their uh, superior beings of Mars and Venus. They don't want to darken its people anymore. No more blacks and tawnies over here. Increase the lovely white. Because the Spaniards, Italians, French, Russians, and Swedes, and Germans are not white. So if you're a white Russian today, we ask you, who are you? Benjamin Franklin disagrees. Oh, the blonde hair Swedens. No, you're not. Who are you people? Nordic, who are you people? French, who are you people? Italians, who are you people? Spaniards, who are you people? When we see that they've been trying to iconoclast the Spaniards, repaint the Spaniards, yeah, they've been doing this for a long time, Kyle. <laughs> this is the princess of Denmark. What are you talking about, Denmark? What are you talking about? Look how they made Charles Kento now. This is my point. But you got these phenotypes and you call yourself a Spaniard or a Hispanic. But the Spanish are swarthy. So why would you have to repaint your images? You got to say, who am I and where did I come from? And why am I hiding in the tents of swarthy people? When I know I was looking just, that we was looking just like this. And why would they have to paint over their faces? If we're talking about the Spanish kings, because this panel depicts some of the Spanish kings who were Inca emperors.
black kings of Spain, right? Oh, haughty I, oh, haughty I, Charles. And Emperor Charles V. Now they got you looking like this, speaking Spanish. Claiming land, saying my genealogies connect me to all this land. Look at my genealogies. I got some nigga in me, man. Trust me, man. How can I trust you when you are the new image? We don't got to make this. We, we ain't got to make stuff up. We ain't got to try to figure it out, man. We know what the younger, 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 younger look like. How did it change and why did it change, man? Let's go, man. Let's get a little bit, man, for the dismount with the bro cootie mayo. Continuing to recon, man. Always in the classroom, and we appreciate steady water, steady energy, and everything you're building, my noggin, you know what I'm saying? Because you're raising the frequency, and you're allowing noggins, man, to, you know, get more validation, man. See, clearly what the recon is all about. I'm belly flopping it. Let's go. Is there? Let's go see. Hold on, man. Man, Three, two. His guy. My name is Michelle. I've lost 32 pounds. She's happy. Next having time. kids means having no more me time. Okay. That's what she's telling you. Slash Utah. And we got it right away. Mount Pisgah, Utah. Check this out. It's right over here. Again, Mount Pisgah in Utah. Mount Pisgah in Utah. Mount Pisgah in Utah. You see that? Again, he went from the plains of Moab onto the mountain of Nebo to the top of Pisgah, all right? And I just want to show you guys here on Google Maps from Mount Nebo down here all the way up here to Mount Pisgah, straight line almost going up. And they're saying, I guess it's a total of around 53 hours, right? 157 miles. Again, that's walking distance, all right? And yeah, <coughs> Moses and these people could have been on horse or walking. You know, doing this, that was normal back then. We have dragons. Let's go. Back then, you see how it crosses the Great Lake. All right. And then the Utah Lake, which some say is the Sea of Galilee, that wow. with the Jordan that empties into the Dead Sea, or a salt lake. Uh -huh. All right. So again, so far, we got all these three locations in the same area. Moab was right. You see that Yunta? Here's the Ashley National Forest. So this, you know, area right here near Pisgah and like right in, but come on, man. We can't make this up. We can't make this up. I, I haven't seen it no better, man, in terms of just visually like, look, Pisgah and Nebo are equal distant. Like you could draw a triangle, you know. To this and this Ashley Forest flow, equally equal distance from Nebo to Pisgah, either way. There's a mountain here and a mountain there, right? <laughs> and right in the middle of that, you got that, these higher mountains, and that's where you got the Adam and Eve being buried at, in the tomb of Adam and Eve, in the high Uinta Mountains, now called the National Forest. Flaming George, huh? <laughs> Let's go. It was right over here somewhere, remember? He walked over to Mount Nebo, and then he went up to Pisgah. All right, let's go to the next location. It is, it is, and this is called Midway, man. I, I can't make this up. So again, after he had gone to the top of the mountain of Nebo and to the top of Pisgah, he, they saying it's over against Jericho. Pisgah, which is over against Jericho. Is there a Jericho in Utah? So we're gonna type Jericho as Utah. And here it comes up right away. Jericho, Utah. Okay. We'll go right to it. As you can see, Jericho. Jericho, look at that. Today, that's what, the desert. Doesn't even look like there was ever once a city here. But as you guys can see, there's a lot of roads here and there's a lot of little straight lines here that are not, not being used to that you find in these uh, Google Maps satellites 
and you don't know what they're for. These perfectly straight lines, canals. Look at this. Look at these lines going all everywhere. Like there was something here before. Look at all these lines. Look at these squares. You see that? You see all these squares? There's definitely something over here. Again, Jericho and Utah. Jericho. Again, from, to the top of Pisgah, that is over against Jericho. All right, so you guys can see it's 48 hours, 145 miles from Mount Pisgah, and it is over, over against, over across Mount Pisgah, right? Jericho's right here. Jericho, Utah, all right? Jericho, Utah, from Mount Pisgah, all right? From Mount Pisgah. All these locations are here. We're going to go to the next location now. And then it says that he showed him Pisgah, and the Lord showed him all the land of Gilead unto then. Gilead. All right, so is Gilead here too as well? Gilead. When I type in Gilead, Utah, I get South Gilead Way, South Lake City. So South Gilead is a place in Utah, South Gilead which was once most likely Gilead altogether, North Gilead, East, West Gilead, but now it's just South Gilead. Looks like a nice little neighborhood here. Gilead way, right? South Gilead, Gilead. This is again in Utah, Gilead. And from uh, Jericho here on Google Maps, you can go up, maybe it says 27 hours walking and you make it to South Gilead way. Again, this is all visible from Mount Nebo and Mount Pisgah, all these surrounding towns. Remember, we already showed that. So, South Gilead, right? And it says that he showed him, the Lord showed him from Mount Nebo and Mount Pisgah, the land of Gilead, unto Dan. Now, does Dan, is there a town called Dan in Utah? Dan? Dan? Uh oh, Dan. Body bag, Dan. Body bag, Dan. I ain't all the way there. Now, when I typed in Dan Utah, nothing comes up. But then I tried Daniel, which is the same thing. And look, Daniel Utah. Dan, Daniel Utah. Again, near the same facility near Mount Nebo. All right. This is Daniel right here. Daniel, look at that. Daniel Utah. And it happens to be, look at that, the Church of Jesus Christ of Later Day Saints near the Mormons. All right. Near the Mormons. Look at this. All right. I just want to show you guys Mount Nebo is right over here somewhere. So from Mount Nebo, you can definitely see the whole land of Daniel and Gilead. He showed him all the land of Gilead and unto Dan or Daniel. All right. From Mount Nebo, you can definitely see it. All right. From Mount Nebo, Daniel, Daniel, right, right here. Daniel, Utah, Daniel, Utah. The next place it says here, and he also showed him. All the land of Naphtali and the land of Ephraim and Manasseh. All right, Naphtali. Hmm, Naphtali. Now, when I put it Naphtali, Utah, I don't get anything, but I did notice again, Nephi, Utah, which is very, very similar almost to Naphtali, Nephi, Neph, Neph, Naphtali, Nephi, Nephi, Utah. To me, which is very similar again in the same proximity. You can definitely see Nephi. All right, as you can see here, you can see Nephi, the town of Nephi from Mount Nebo. Mount Nebo is right here. You see Mount Nebo right here, guys? Let me zoom in some more. All right, you see it? Mount Nebo. And you go down, and you got the town of Nephi. All right? Nephi, Naphtali, Nephi. All right? Maybe some of you are saying, well, he's reaching. I think this is very so, so similar. All right? Now it says he also showed him the land of Ephraim. The land of Ephraim. So we type in Ephraim here and Utah. Look, first thing that comes up, Ephraim Canyon, Utah, Ephraim, Utah, Ephraim, Utah. Where's Ephraim, Utah? It's going to take us there right now. Look at that. Ephraim. That's in Utah as well. And again, you can see this place from Mount Nebo. All right. You can see all this from Mount Nebo right here. Mount Nebo is so high, you can see all the way to Ephraim, right? All the way right here. This is in the plain. Of course, you can see it. This is a lot lower. Ephraim, right? Reference again from Mount Nebo 
all the way to F frame, right? He showed him F frame from Mount Nebo. Mount Nebo's right here. You can definitely see it. It's really high. Mount Nebo's really high. F frame's in the plane. You can definitely see it. Now in the verse, it says that he also showed him Manasseh, the town of Manasseh or the location of Manasseh and all the land of Judah. All right, so we have more location, Manasseh. Now, when I type in Manasseh, Utah, I don't really get much. I don't know where it's bringing me right now. It didn't really bring me anywhere, but I want to show you something, right? All right, so I wasn't able to find it on the map, and there's a reason for that. It's because the town no longer exists. It didn't survive, but there was a Manasseh in Utah, and I found it right away when I put Manasseh, Utah. You can see all these uh, links, all right? If you click on the first one, which says Manasseh, Utah, and it says Manasseh, St. Pete, or St. Piti, is located on the west side of the Sandpitch River along the Sandpitch Mountains. Damn, San P like St. Peter, huh? Uh-oh. On the east side is the flourishing town of Ephraim, all right? Right next to Ephraim, right? What does it say here? And he showed them the land of Ephraim and Manasseh who were right next to each other. And what else do we know about these two tribes? They were brothers. So they would be very close to each other. They were brothers, right? Ephraim and Manasseh, Joseph's kids, right? So again, Ephraim and Manasseh, they were right next to each other. At one time consisted of 21 families. The town of Manasseh did not prosper like its sister city across the river. And the area is now used only for agricultural purpose. Uh, so again, history of Manasseh, Utah. Manasseh was there. Ephraim, Manasseh was. And it must be fertile. It must be fertile. Yo, Cootie Bale's popping off, man. I'm leading the leg. You can see, man, he's taking a very uh, familiar and similar journey <laughs> that we popped off, man, in, uh, you know, 2016, man. And, you know, you try it, man, you know what I'm saying? And you see what else you can connect, like this great history of man that's say, as well as, uh, yeah, I mean, the San P drop is, what did we say? We're going to look at a golden spike <clears throat> for the dismount golden spike. Golden spike. Utah history. All right, so there's a whole Golden Spike National Historic Park. Okay. Okay. Come on, man. Located in Promontory Summit, north of Great Salt Lake, in eastern central Box Elder County, Utah. The nearest city is Corinth. Come on. It commemorates the completion of the first transcontinental railroad. Uh huh. And why they have to pop off this uh, railroad right here? Where were they transporting in? Where were they transporting out? Because they ain't going to build a railroad unless they really need it, right? <laughs> unless they got some. They over there in Judah. The final joining of the rails spanning the continent was, was signified by the driving of the ceremonial golden spike. So they're saying that this is like the conjunction. Like this is where it all joined together. This was the final joining of the rail. You think it has any significance in Golden Spike, Utah? This is the final joining of the railroads that span the continent, my nigga. And they're commemorating it right there, ceremonial Golden Spike. So you got a 17.6 karat gold final spike driven by Leland Stanford. To join the rails of the first transcontinental railroad across the United States, connecting the Central Pacific Railroad from Sacramento and Union Pacific. So you think all this is just happenstance and it happened to crisscross applesauce right there where Judah would be? <laughs> yeah, I think they were taking a lot of gold out of Golden Spike, man. So Golden Spike is a whole national historic park that's over 2,735 acres. 
Initially, it was just seven acres when it was established in 1957, limiting the area near the junction of the two rail systems. The site was expanded by 2,176 acres in 1965 through land swaps and acquisition of approximately a strip of land, mostly 400 feet wide, along 15 and a half miles of former railroad right away. Okay. <laughs> So if they telling us it's over 2,000 acres, what, how big is it really? You know, we're talking about Judah City, right? <laughs> it's bigger than a golden spike, my nigga. It's thousands of acres of stuff. You don't have any idea what's over there. You're looking for the Temple Mount. You're looking for the, the Tabernacle. <laughs> You're looking for all this stuff. You ain't even been to Golden Spike, you talk. <laughs> There's a lot to see in America, boss. It's a lot being covered up. Why is it Golden Spike, man? Man, this is what happens, man. We we were searching for Judah, and then we got Judah City, something like that. What, what happened again? And they just take me over to this little area. That's Moab. That's Utah. So Naphtali must be over here somewhere. Just by virtue. Mm -hmm. Look, they just took us over here. I just went to nowhere. We are still in Utah. That is still Moab. This is still Ephraim. That is still Jericho. And that is still Utah. Come on. And Manasseh? Is there a Manasseh? <laughs> the master man. Very interesting. You type in Judah, Utah. Uh -huh. Where's it gonna take us? You know it's not called Judah no more. Uh -huh. That'll just be crazy. But where does it take us? Does it take us somewhere crazy? Does it say I can't find it? Judah, Utah. Oh wait, now it's gonna go crazy and take me to Nebraska. Don't play. We've been through this. Judah, Utah. Come on. <laughs> to play now yeah it just wants to act crazy now you check it out though last time it took me to golden spike judah city judah city judah city ah, but judah city judah city ah, wait a minute it took me to golden spike I think Utah. They call him Jew the Golden Spike. And look what they put. Look. They got their church. You know what I'm saying? You go in close. <laughs> Man. These people put up town halls and stuff. This is when the Mormons came in and started renaming everything. When you look at the... Um, man, man, man. Hey, shout out to my balcony servers. Man, my noggers know, man. Y'all was there, man. And, uh, you know, they can't duplicate the flow. Um, they, they can't wash it out. You know, they, they can't replicate it. The original is always going to shine. And, you know, I'm saying the hijacks always going to hide and shrivel up, you know, because they don't have the confidence to truly be originators, originals. You know what I'm saying? You got the confidence to be an original. All the documents back up the fact that every landmass is you originally the original Naga, Swarthy Naga. They can't hide Judah City, uh, you know, Golden Spike. They, they can't hide it. <laughs> we know it's over 2,000 acres, man. Yeah, Golden Spike National Historical Park. I wonder what's there. I wonder what's there, boss. Ain't none to see here, boss. <laughs> Hey, we out of here, man. This is a cool little trek. You know, a couple of jabronis is hiking, you know, on this trek. And uh, they over there. Yeah, we're just about. They over there. Uh, At 11,000 feet. Not Tell you. No. Dodge. He's going to get up. I'm just Same with these nuts. Feels like it, too. And, uh, you know. Get that. Yeah. Uh, a wave of dizziness. Like on the uh, acapella. <laughs>
But I just want you to kind of. Well, it looks like we hit the uh, interesting part of the hike, huh? Close to the summit as they're getting closer to the <laughs> summit. Not Man, it looks like we got almost a knife edge there going up this. Uh, Levi, just uh, it in. We'll put on the helmet. Dang. Go hands free. The city's effort. And, uh, That's a, Jen forgot her helmet. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you can see uh, Neptali. You can but, see. Uh, all I'm actually going to put on a windbreaker, too. I'm actually starting to get chilly now. Of Pisca, of all these mountain mountain people. Boy, that is one. Yeah, this is. Uh, you know, Moses ain't too far from the right Woods. Talking about the youth to be interesting. <laughs> high mountains. Okay, then. So we're going to belly flop, but just pay attention to the view. This should be uh, interesting. I feel like a slight headache coming on. So, you know, sometimes. Get up here and get it and. Uh, what you see on the surface. I don't think summer. we're going to spend too much time at Summit. <laughs> what is inside? Some sharp stone, man. I might wear gloves on the way down. Allow why? Take a fall on it. Ooh. You'll slice your hands right open. I just to see clearly. You know a while that unity is our great weapon in the cold. Folks, greatest protection. You're certainly getting there. It is within grasp. Oh, Land we see belongs to the tribe. You kind of see where given it the trail cuts around the corner there, and you go up. It doesn't look bad at all. It doesn't inherit a lot worse when we were down farther looking up at this. Though we can't see, but, uh, you know, the glory. Jen seems to think we're through the worst of it. Of everything that is on at the moment, you know, we know <sighs> it exists and we exist, and we're not in it for the glory, but not that we're in it for the AI. No, in a heart bones. We keep the heart, the heart bone surrounded Whew. by your water. Yeah. Yes, yeah, sir. This we'll is a good one. This terrain. Don't let us slip. Don't let us fall. Take each stud. Don't let us dodge all hype. I'll call. Managi. Sucking wind, huh? Step be sturdy and let our but, man, we, we don't have far to go at all, but <laughs> we get like yeah. <coughs> forever 25 like, yards and get the water wow. for a second. I don't spend too much time on the boat. A lot of water. We just left the water. I tell you about how take us looking at the view, man. <laughs> It's been a long day. Uh. Everything you see is your land. How are you doing? Good. Okay. As far as the eye can see, right? Yeah, I'm kind of coming over, so you're fine. Just be careful for anything loose. Oh. All right. Well, we are. Back down to this spot. As far as the eye can see, my knife. As far as your eyes can see. What'd it say? What'd the drop say? Let's get that Torah only. Deuteronomy 34 for the dismount, the water to the cars. I pray you're rested. You know what I'm saying? And rejuvenated, renewed. Your cup is, you know, full, but you're willing to empty it and let it be filled again. I pray you're getting, you know what I'm saying, what you need out of your investigation. Hawa showed him Moses went up from the plains of Moab into the Mount Nebo to the top of Pisgah. Over against Jericho and Hawa showed him all the land, even Gilead, as far as Dan or Daniel, and all of Naphtali or Nephi, and the land of Ephraim and Manasseh, and all the land of Hawauda, as far as the Hinder Sea, and the south and the plain, and every valley in Jericho, and the city of palm trees. 
You know the city of palm trees, man. As far as the horn, Hawa said to him, This is the land which I swore unto Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying, I will give it into your seed. I have caused you to see it with your eyes, but you shall not go there, Moses. <laughs> so Moses, the servant of Hawa, died there in the land of Moab, except. <laughs> His eye was not dim, and his natural force never left him. Do you see clearly, man, as far as your eye can see? We're going to take a break and chuck some water. <sighs> That's a great shot right there, as far as your eye can see. On our butts. That is oh, yeah. steep right there. All right, that summit right over there. Your hills, your valleys, all that will be made straight again for you. Your hills will be rebuilt. And this time, make it forever, my Naga. No more confusion. Because now a Naga see clearly. Hey, to water. To the cons for the continued recon, the steady energy and vibration. Ahab Kuni Mayo, Ahab John Levi, <laughs> Ahab uh, Lex Will, you know what I'm saying? Let us find the truth. Teach me to be priestly, man. I'm talking about oregano flow, natural by law. All the cons, man, that, you know, have been and are truly dedicated to the awareness of our orientation and our vibration. Ty Bad Zion, you already know. Battle up, we in battle time. Allah, 